Welcome, Pastor Kevin. Thank you so very much for uh, joining us here for Conversations with Daniel, and I am very happy to have you on. Well, I'm, I'm honored, uh, Daniel. Uh, uh, you approached me and uh, took me across the river to a hockey game, as I remember. Yes. And uh, just yeah. uh, really appreciated your uh, uh, generosity in that way to yeah. get to know me, and, uh, and I got to know you a bit better. So, yeah. yeah. Glad funny, to be here. Funny thing about sports is I'm not really into sports. Me either. And so we went to the <laughs> hockey game just to fill you guys in. We went, we went to the hockey game and sat and talked. And when everybody stood up and cheered, we thought, oh, we better clap. And yeah, then we uh, went back yeah. to our conversation. <laughs> it was, I know that the Red Wings were playing. Yes. It was their home ice, but that, I, that's who were all they I playing? Know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's it okay. A, that other team. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good time. Uh, icebreaker question for you. Speaking mm -hmm. of athletics, mm -hmm. have you ever won any awards in athletics? <laughs> that, no. No. <laughs> no. Um, uh, I, uh, I mean, earlier in life, uh, you know, I did some, some running and stuff, but uh, never, never really competitively. Okay. Uh, just, uh, just to stay healthy. Okay. Now I ride a bicycle around town when I can. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, if, if, if you're going to ask, I won long jump one year. So. Oh. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> Actually, the Bible talks about, there's, there's a, I think a proverb that says, don't brag about the things you did in your youth, right? Oh, well, <laughs> oh, that's, that's truly remarkable. Can you still do it? No. No. <laughs> I think I'd hurt myself pretty bad. Yeah. I thought you were going to say synchronized swimming. I but, like I like swimming. Yeah, well. um, but never synchronized. <laughs> I can't even synchronize myself usually. <laughs> All right. So tell me, um, Pastor Kevin, what vision do you have for the community that you serve and for the families in your congregation? Yeah. So uh, I pastor New Song Church. Uh, came to Windsor and planted. Uh, the church. It's now been going 27 years. Awesome. And uh, from the beginning, uh, we always saw ourselves as being a low barrier church. In other words, uh, mm. a church that uh, would be open and hospitable uh, to people living in the city core that uh, would not necessarily wander into a church or if they did would not necessarily always feel a warm welcome so mm -hmm. so we've really uh, planted ourselves among the the uh, the poor mm -hmm. and the marginalized among strugglers and uh, and as we grow and mature in our faith uh, we know that uh, we're not going anywhere but we're supposed to to be there to uh, love our neighbor and uh, so that have I mean congregationally uh, we are a you know a full services church right. you know we do all the essentials that a, that a church would um, but our heart uh, is always to be um, connecting and, and building bridges uh, with with the community around us what where did that vision uh, or when did that vision start to be um, a low barrier church. Uh, I, I came with that vision, and uh, yeah, part of that uh, prior to uh, Windsor, I had uh, been a youth pastor in some okay. other communities, and and what I found in youth ministry was that uh, I, I had this compulsion or this um, natural move towards uh, teens that were in the community more than I felt towards teens in the church. Okay. So that uh, leaving the 99 to yeah. go find the one was always uh, part of um, how I was wired mm. uh, as a Christian. Now that does take, I think, more faith. Yeah. I, yeah. Because you're, you're coming to the poor, the needy, and um, you, I don't know, me, I would be thinking uh, even financially, like, okay, how is, how is this congregation going to support the church itself? Yeah. Right. So I think that that's a, 
a great walk of faith that you have in, in moving in that direction. And mm -hmm. you, may, you may be supported by the other churches and stuff like that. I'm not entirely sure, but just to, to step forward in faith and to be able to serve, I love that. Yeah, in our early years, we had a lot of other churches and uh, donors that saw what we were doing and, and gave into it. Uh, that still occasionally happens, but from the beginning, uh, we really had a desire to support ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and so we've had to, had to learn to live on a tight budget right. and uh, do without at times. And, uh, but out of that, um, you know, it's just uh, kept, kept a level of uh, generosity and heart mm -hmm. that uh, doesn't get all bogged down. Mm -hmm. you know, with um, uh, how much money we need, right? you know, because you ask any church of any size, you know, do you have enough money? <laughs> and all of us always need just a little bit more. If we just had a little bit more, the things that we would do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's great. Thank you. Love it. Uh, now, grief can come in more ways than just death. Mm -hmm. And I, it's, it's grief. Grief happens in so many ways, and with some of the uh, folks that you deal with day in and day out, um, they're down and out, and they carry a load of grief that may be coming from uh, just their their circumstance in their life. Yeah. Not necessarily yeah. from the death of somebody, but the grief, the burden that they carry because of whatever wherever their circumstance might be. What do you find can help ease that burden for people? I think the first thing I would say is you need to be able to um, listen without judgment when people are telling you their story mm. and not be thinking um, how, how can I fix their situation, but rather how can I enter into their experience so that um, as a pastor or as a friend uh, that they begin to see this is somebody who mm. listens to me. Mm. This is somebody that I can talk to and not feel like I have to hide and be ashamed of things. One right. of the things that we say on occasion at, at our church, uh, I'll you know, be at the microphone and I'll, I'll remind people Hey everybody, just a reminder, this is a no shame zone. Mm. And uh, because everybody carries a burden of disappointment mm -hmm. or shame or uh, regret. And uh, true. And, and so, so it's important to know that, um, you know, that uh, the, the great shepherd, Jesus is with us and uh, he's all about uh, that that lost sheep. He's all about the injured, the, the, the one that, that needs, needs support and needs strength. And, mm -hmm. and so I think that, that we, we just have to keep refreshing ourselves in, in the path of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if we look to Jesus with our own burdens, then we're also able to walk with people and their burdens. Yes, yeah. I, I'm reminded of the Lord's Prayer. Um, forgive me, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And it's, yeah. and it's the fact, and there's so many parables about that is, is realizing who we are mm -hmm. as sinners. Yeah. So then we should have the humility to accept someone else and not yeah. come down and just try to fix them and, or try to be judgmental towards what they're saying. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Do you think, um, do you think that it's natural for people when they're listening to someone's story to try to come in and fix that? And we, do we have to hold ourselves back in, in, in humility, remind ourselves to just be there for them? Uh, I, I think a person's personality is going to lead the way a certain amount, but yeah, I think I think there's something to what you're saying that that we do we do have to um, pay attention to what we're hearing and be slow to speak, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, 
too many times people be opening up their heart and trying to give shape to something and, and the other person just keeps interrupting or keeps trying to finish the sentence or right. interjecting, you know, mm -hmm. uh, advice. Right. But I don't know about you, but if, if I'm hurting, I usually don't want advice. Um, I may want advice, but what I really want is the security of knowing that I'm heard and listened to, um, that, um, <clears throat> that someone is going to be with me and in processing what I'm dealing with. Yeah, that's excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Those are good words of wisdom for all of us to um, chew on and hopefully implement in our lives. Uh, now, can you tell me of a personal grief journey that you have had that has effect affected your perspective in life? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's probably many examples. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, when you're a pastor and you're always involved in everybody else's story and everybody else's pain, um, that, uh, that you need to know how to process your own. Mm. You need to know how to uh, unburden yourself as well. Um, a, a story that uh, about 20 years ago, um, I had uh, a call to come do a, a funeral for a uh, young 29-year-old uh, single mom that had uh, overdosed and uh, she had a, a five-year-old daughter. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you remember the funeral home that used to be on Wyandotte across from the Chaldean church. It, then it became like a health food uh, store or something. Okay. Uh, right next to Champs uh, or the Corner Motel, but there was an old funeral home. And the old funeral homes, as you know, were often just kind of exaggerated houses. Yes, it, it may have been Windsor Chapel at one of their previous locations. Could I might, be, I might yeah, be wrong. I'm not sure. I might be wrong. But, but nonetheless, I mean. yeah. this, it was the old style house funeral home. And uh, it so yeah, everything was kind of smaller and tighter. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, dark, dark, this a little dingy. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and so I, I came in to do this funeral, and uh, the the room was was packed, hmm. and they're putting out extra chairs, and it was just you you, you could hardly find a seat, and uh, so uh, I'm standing with the open casket right behind me, literally right behind me right here. Mm -hmm. And uh, then just uh, four feet ahead of me was the front row of chairs. Wow. So it was tight yeah. and it was hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and right in front of me was a social worker from Children's Aid sitting with the little five-year-old girl that was the daughter mm -hmm. of the woman that had passed. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> you know, so I think w one of the things when you're in a, a larger setting and even human distance, you can sometimes abstract it a little bit. Yeah. You can kind of professionalize a little bit because it's not right upon you. It's not in your right. space, right? Yes, yes. But th this experience was one where I felt especially vulnerable. And as I got, and I got up and made my opening remarks, um, I was just so uh, emotionally broken mm -hmm. and choking up and tearing up. And uh, yeah, that's, you're, you're not supposed to lead a funeral that way, but I was. Everybody understands it. Uh, yeah, everybody understands it. Yeah. And, uh, but that, that had a profound shaping on me and reminded me of the, the brokenness that you know, is in people's lives and uh, that it, you can't just take care of people at a distance. True. You actually have to get into their space and they into yours. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's so much easier to take care of them from a distance. Oh, so. oh, yeah. Yeah. Make, make an appointment <laughs> with me. I'll sit across the desk. Oh, well, time's up. Right. You know, uh, 
and, and God has this way of giving these divine interruptions in our life, right? Where mm-hmm. you can't um, just keep everything on your schedule and you can't contain everything the way you want to. Yeah. This was one of those moments for me. And just uh, for, for years uh, after, I, um, that was 20 years ago, and uh, for years it, it just haunted me. Um, that little five-year-old, mm-hmm. you know, losing her mom. And uh, then um, Facebook, one day I saw a name. Huh. And uh, so I sent a message. Hey, was your mother... Dun, 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 dun. And she replies back, yes, it was. Oh, my God. And wow. so I got to hear her story, hmm. how she went into uh, adoption and uh, was was raised in a, a home where she she was loved and and when I uh, reconnected with this little five-year-old girl who's now you know 18 19 years old wow. and uh, was uh, in college and and had hope and a future you know and that's awesome and yeah. and so yeah that 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 was you know the 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 <clears throat> sort of the the grievous the grievous first experience at the funeral mm-hmm. but then seeing how you know god is watching out for the broken and and how she was uh had nobody and she was brought into a family yeah. and uh, she was able to grow to maturity and and have a, a life that was so different mm-hmm. um from where where she started as a baby you know so that yeah. that reminds me sometimes that when we don't have the answer in our pain um, that if you wait on the Lord there comes a day when you'll gain a new understanding mm-hmm. that doesn't remove the pain that was there originally right but you it just glorifies God you see how how did that happen right she could have had such a horrible life and mm-hmm. uh, and yet God found a way for her. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times lately I've been thinking about different tragedy and, and talking with some people about the grief that they've been through and uh, it doesn't always, um, it doesn't always have that ending yet. Yeah, um, you're always at the front end in your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been, been yes, I am. Um, but even more on a personal level, being able to talk to some people about different things that they've gone through, and it's amazing to see how how God, like, we can be put through fire. Yeah, and out of the other end can come a gold that's more pure and more yeah. precious yeah. than before, or the silver. Yeah. Uh, however, we do the analogy. Um, this might need to be put through some fire. Yeah. This <laughs> this is uh, quite an old chalice here. Guess what it's made of? Is it silver coated solid brass? How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little conversation. Oh, about. the label on the bottom. That's how we. I knew. was curious about it earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little reprieve from our conversation this the facility that we're in right now yeah tell us a little bit about that real sure quick. yeah so um, this is a little church building at 1240 uh, Pierre Avenue and uh, it used to be the community missionary church it uh, closed down in 2018 and uh, this year the trustees of the property um, gifted the property to our congregation, New Song yeah. Church. So um, that was uh, such an unexpected, um, beautiful, generous gift. And we take this kind of gift really seriously. And so we're in the process of making some plans with this property to, awesome. you know, have another place that uh, loves its neighbor. Awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, and, I, and I do really appreciate how, um, going back to our earlier conversation, um, just your perspective and um, once again, more for us to, to chew on and think about how um, 
just being in a personal space with tragedy or someone who's going through tragedy can have that impact on us. Yeah. And it does. It, ha it yeah. has to if we're human. Um, but then to be able to watch and see what God can do out of that um, and just to be there for people through those tragic times. Yeah, I think, I think our whole world right now is dealing with anger mm -hmm. and grief and depression yeah. and uh, I mean this is we if we don't have a, a perspective that looks beyond today we're in trouble yeah now you're a musician yep and how have you seen that music can affect the human soul uh, I I think I, I see it every week when when we gather for church and and we worship God together, uh, that there is a soul lift that happens, mm -hmm. that uh, everyone that enters into that experience, um, I think the, the thing about worship music is it actually helps us to be more human and express uh, a range of emotions that either are distorted or suppressed. Okay. And so in, in worship, uh, we get outside of our, our head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we get outside of our own experience and, and we look at God. And, uh, and music, I would say that music uh, doesn't, um, it doesn't, you could use music to manipulate people. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is that at its best, music stimulates mm. people. It, it, it awakens us. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and so, uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, in some cases, uh, mu music can inhabit the same real estate in us as uh, the, the uh, place that prayer is. Mm -hmm. You know that there, and and I'm not just talking about worship music. Good good music, yeah. no matter where it comes from, stimulates and opens up something in That's us. True. Yeah. And and as we we begin to, you know, self reflect and say, what's going on inside me when I uh, hear that song that I like, um, we may actually be uh, in in the interior world, uh, approaching the place where our best prayer can take place. Cool. And uh, so for me, it's, it's a very spiritual thing. Um, and, uh, you know, people won't remember the sermon I preached on Sunday. The next day, they won't remember half or 90% of what I said, <laughs> or if they remember or if they were listening. But a song can lodge in somebody and carry them day in, day out, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I think we've all had those experiences where, you know, we just, um, a song took on a meaning, and, and a song also, music also has this ability to attach to our memory, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I think at a, in, a, in a funeral, uh, music, good music is so essential, mm -hmm. you know, not, not just the yeah. somber, scary sounding dead music <laughs> get the organ just <laughs> bah, bah. yeah i mean that maybe that helps somebody but it, it actually pushes me down to a lower place but but a good song can something, uh, maybe, open maybe. something up in when when the the grief is crushing you and right. closing you down true yeah maybe some of the really old somber music uh, help some people find ground for their grief to be yeah. able to associate their grief with this somber music. And, yeah, if uh, it's done well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if it's not done well, then that's a, a different kind of grief for a musician. Right? Yeah, for a musician, for sure. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I go to many churches. I won't even name a church or or a musician, but uh, maybe it wasn't even in this city. But we were uh, going down the aisle with a casket, and the musician started singing. It sounded like Kermit the Frog. 
<laughs> and uh, I think there was a lot of people with smirks on their face. <laughs> <laughs> well, that also can help too. Some good it comic can, relief. It can. Yeah, yeah. Bless, they, bless their heart, though. They're they're serving, and uh, yeah, and it can have impact on someone's grief. The music, and and that's really cool how you equate it with that place of worship, that place of prayer. Sometimes it, it I never really thought of it before, but when I'm listening to maybe some music that I really like, it almost takes you to a different place. It does, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then if you have, and actually that's <clears throat> one of the questions that I've asked um, a lot of the people I've been having this conversation with is if they had a song that get, it throws them back to a time of grief or a time when someone passed. Um, I asked you a, a little bit differently, being a musician and how music can affect. Right. But, but you, you nailed it on the head that it does, it can bring you back to that place and it can... When I take my own personal um, anxieties and griefs and sorrows um, to my guitar mm. and uh, open myself up to start to articulate something, um, that gives me a, a personal way of um, being able to uh, express um, something that's coming out of that empty space mm. you know and yeah. and uh and 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 then to do it again whenever i want to you know and uh and and knowing that that a a good song will always um sneak in to to where that empty space is and and it'll it'll give the opportunity for something to fill the emptiness right yeah i think we can all relate to that yeah so now's your chance to ask me daniel the funeral director any question you like well i al already asked you about synchronized swimming <laughs> but nope. uh <laughs> nope <laughs> um yeah I, I have a question for uh for you and uh and uh, and also for uh people who are in the work that you do the ministry that you do uh, my question is um you know, when you are day after day, uh, more than once in a day, mm -hmm. sometimes exposed to um, an incredible wave of grief uh, and sometimes just shocking things. I mean, not everybody, it's, you know, well, grandma was 92 and we all love her, but it was time. Yeah. No, sometimes there's very disturbing deaths mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, have you ever um, felt um, traumatized or deeply uh, just thrown off balance by an experience of somebody else's death and in in that what what are your ways of decompressing and unpacking what you experience, mm. you know, is there, like what, what keeps a funeral director from getting PTSD? Can you keep yourself from getting PTSD? I don't know, I don't, I don't think you can. I don't but, think so. Um, but you can, you can recognize yeah, trauma, right? Absolutely. No, <clears throat> excuse me, so I definitely have like bookmarks in my experience of of very tragic situations that have really had an impact on me yeah. um and i i think of um when i was working in toronto and and there was a toddler that had passed mm. um unexpectedly and it was it was very tragic it, it really divided the whole f the whole congregation who was there that day there was, yeah. i mean i say congregation the, the 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 group of people that was there um one like the man's side of the family was on this side and the woman's side of the family was on this side mm. and they ended up having a brawl um oh. sadly um the child was there up front the casket was still open yeah but the emotions were just so overwhelming for everybody that it just there was you, you they couldn't contain it and uh 
that was very, very early on in my career. And it just, I guess, in that moment, I would say I would just like take it to God in prayer. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I do, I'm very thankful that I have that personal walk with God and I know he's Mm -hmm. always there. Um, at the end of every one of our videos, the scripture verse comes up. He, uh, he is, God is close to the brokenhearted. I love that one. And he rescues yeah. those who cry out to him. Yeah. And it's so true. And I know that in, in these tragic circumstances, and there's so many, so many tragic circumstances that I, I have to see in it. It sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, but in order to um, kind of draw away from that, and say if I deal with a tragic circumstance, whether it be in the office, in the chapel, over the phone, whatever it might be, if I'm doing a house call and I, and I go to pick up someone's loved one and there's a tragic circumstance there, yeah. um, I just, uh, I mean, I have to give it over to God yeah. and, and just know that He is there with them through that. I can't solve it for them. Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to help walk them through the next couple of days that it might be. Yeah. And, and personally, um, like on the way home, just kind of thinking it through, giving, giving it all over to God. I, I, I'm so thankful that I have him to give it over to because mm. he can handle much more than I can handle. Right. And I'll let him do that. Yeah. Um, so I think that's my way of, of coping and, or of, of giving, giving over these traumatic experiences and, yeah. and uh, just through the faith that I have. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah, I think so. And I think that, <clears throat> you know, there are times when it is safe and appropriate to tell that story mm-hmm. to uh, to somebody, and you know, um, that's another way that I think we offload our, our grief and our sorrow, yes. right? Yeah. And by, that's true. Yeah. By giving voice to it, and, and, and s- yeah, at times I can, and at times I can't. Yeah, sometimes you got to carry the secrets. That's right. Yeah, because everything as a as a funeral director, we are held to a standard of confidentiality like you would That's be That's why you're pastor. trusted. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so um, now I, I'm able to share some things with my wife because you do need to share some things. Mm-hmm. But sometimes maybe she doesn't want to have to hear the stuff that I have to deal with. Yeah. Right? Because... Um, it can be tragic. It can be overwhelming sometimes. So if that's the case, just talk to God about it and, yep. and give it over to him. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So I know you've shared a few things that you have going on. Is there anything else that you'd like to share what you have going on in the, in the community right now? Um, well, I, I would just say this, that um, as a pastor, I've noticed uh, how many people um, have, been skipping funerals hmm. uh, through through the time of shutdowns and and masking and now vaccine passports all that which you don't need to get into a visiting or a funeral by the way oh good thankfully yeah at first they mandated that you had to yeah um, they got a lot of backlash I wrote a long letter myself good and they rescinded that. Oh. And I'm, I'm so thankful because I yeah. do not want someone who, for whatever reason, is not vac- vaccinated to be denied that. And so they yeah. rescinded that and they said, no, you don't have to have that passport to get into a funeral home, thankfully. I'm thinking about how uh, people who have lost somebody and don't have that closure, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that there's there's a lot of people where that a growing number of people where that's the case mm-hmm. and uh, you know I think that uh, funeral homes and and churches uh, we have a great opportunity uh, to when we discover you know those who didn't have a funeral they couldn't afford to mm-hmm. or it was too complicated they could only have 10 people there you know yeah. and yeah. there was another 150 that that wanted to be there 
you know, I think it, you, you, you don't have to just have one funeral. You can have a gathering again. And uh, I remember when I um, did some music over at hospice, they, every year they would have a, a memorial service for everybody that had passed away yep. that year. Mm -hmm. And uh, how meaningful that is, you know. And uh, so if anybody's in that situation and thinking, you know, well, uh, I wish I could do a funeral, but, you know, I, I can't afford to or mm -hmm. anything like that, I think, um, you know, talk to your pastors and, uh, and uh, you know, whatever any of us on our side of yeah. caring can do, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's no dumb questions. Um, there's always a way to help people. Yeah. Find someone who's caring. Yeah. Find someone who's willing to listen and try to uh, help you get that um, closure that you need. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah. Yeah. And now you do have a podcast and a blog. Yeah. yeah. Which what we'll do is we'll put links to those in the description below. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, I've been blogging since 2009. Uh, oh. It's called The Orphan Age. Okay. And uh, kind of a play on orphanage. <laughs> and uh, then I have a, a, a podcast uh, called Sidewalk Skyline Podcast. Yeah, it's a great podcast. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And yours is too. <laughs> Soon to come. <laughs> I, I, I will be putting all of this via podcast. Yeah. And, and uh, in time, I've also got another project that we're working on. Um, these, these videos are lengthy i think they're very meaningful though but we're going to be working on doing some short videos talking about yeah. grief and, and grief support so good yeah thank you yeah, very much glad to be a Pastor part of it. kevin yeah. for for being here with me and for having this conversation and i know that it's going to impact people in a very positive way so thank you and thank you for